as for Quick Play, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be fitting a cheap Chinese diesel heater as part of my Ford Transit Mark 7 minibus camper van conversion series. Now, there is loads of videos out there on how to fit these. Pretty much all of them are going to be better than mine. And that's because I kind of learn as I'm filming and most of the time I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. So we're going to start by opening it up, seeing what's in the box. So big fuel tank, the muffler, the heat plate thingy, the instructions and most of the videos I've watched these are pretty useless but I'm gonna have a read anyway. Box of things and the heater. Also got the screen which might be damaged. Splitter for the airflow coming out, vent to put somewhere. Green tubing. From every video I've seen, this green tubing isn't great because it flexes, so under pressure it constricts. So I might have to order some of the white tubing instead. All the wires to hook it up. The air inlet thingy. Got some ducting. This is for the exhaust. Some thinner ducting. I believe this is the pump. In here we've got the fuel filter, the bracket for mounting, and a load of P-clips and zip ties. And next, I've got to decide whether I'm going to strip out the insulation, go direct to the metal with this plate, or if I'm going to buy one of those turrets. I've already got a place marked up where my heater was going to go, but I didn't think to check the underside of my van to make sure it's not going to drill through any braces or wires or anything like that. So I'm going to have to check that and we might have to change the position. So yeah, I think that's everything. I've got to mark out and drill holes in my van again, and I really don't like doing that. Standing in the cold, cold rain I don't even feel the pain Anything to step away I know we could both do better Wish you would have left me here Gonna go underneath and check that that's coming through the right place If you never look in the mirror Counting the days until you're gone Waiting for us to carry on Oh, I'm running you can see that, but my drill is smoking. The hole is still like we're getting there. We're definitely. Uh, fucking. Here's a quick update because we just hit a massive, massive problem. Holes are drilled, it's ready to go in, put some heat sealant on there, start connecting things. Dead exciting, dead exciting. But I was going to mount my fuel tank here because then the nozzle is facing outside. I thought that was a good idea so no diesel would spill. But when you're mounting your fuel tank, you have to have your fuel pump underneath it or nearby or something like that. And then I realized that the electric cable's over there and this needs plugging in with an electric cable. And then whilst I started looking at where all the holes and stuff could go, I realized it was almost impossible to get a decent hole under there because of all the step work, which is the reason I've rearranged my entire kitchen. So my backup area is under the bed at the back. Didn't like that idea too much because then, you know, you've got diesel near your head when you go to sleep. I'd also have to stretch a two and a half meter fuel cable past the exhaust, past the suspension. It just didn't seem like a good idea to me. So I've had to reposition where my fuel tank is going again. Um, one problem I've always seen with people is these are quite noisy. And I was thinking to myself, why isn't it mounted on the outside of the van? And then I saw a video where someone did it. So I think I'm gonna attempt that, which means a hole has to be drilled in the floor. But then I'm also gonna have to drill a hole in the floor for this power cable to go outside the van and insulate it. I think I'm ready to do this. I ordered a pack of the stiffer white tubing, which is much better than the green stuff, and then started assembling everything onto my turret, ready to pop in the hole.
This metal pipe is pretty stiff, so you do need a bit of force to wiggle it on. But it's at this point where I hit a little bit of an issue. The metal pipe probably got slightly knocked in transit and it wasn't perfectly circular, so it wasn't going on to the exhaust. Now the pipe coming out of the heater had a slightly beveled edge and it was much sturdier being attached to the heater. This made it a lot easier for me to force the slightly warped end back on, making it circular and then popped the exhaust thingy on the other circular end as well. Now I saw this trick on someone else's video, basically you slide a string through the hole you've drilled and then just kind of wiggle it out of the funnel end. Once the string's out, you thread it through your fuel connector thingy, tie a knot in it and basically just pull it through the hole. I slid the bolt down the string to keep tension on it whilst I screwed it on and attached it. Then you just remove the string and you're done, simple as that. In the bag of white tubing I bought earlier, I also got these connectors which are absolutely fantastic for attaching the fuel line. You just slide them on, attach the little P-clippy thingies and just tighten them up and it's done. Much better than the connectors that the original kit came with. Next it was time for a healthy dollop of heat resistant sealant, pretty much everywhere as much as I could get. Then I poked the attachments through the hole, careful not to get any heat resistant sealant on it and then put it down and yeah, it was perfect. This is the only bit that definitely needed two people. My mate was on the inside with a screwdriver whilst I was underneath the van tightening up the bolts. Next I had to feed that power connector outside so I drilled a hole, clipped the plug off, fed it through the hole and then obviously I attached it with butt connectors and sealed it all up once it was underneath the van. After that it was time for the fuel line so I drilled another hole and here's where I had a genius idea. I didn't want the cable rubbing so I took some spare 6mm butt connectors and then I used the tubing to push the metal bit from inside the butt connector. That left a tough plastic outer collar that the tube could slide through, that way it wasn't going to rub and wear itself through. There wasn't enough room under my fuel tank for the fuel filter to bend round properly and I didn't want the fuel filter to be on the outside of the vehicle. So I had to use the horrible green tubing and the horrible connectors it came with to make an extension on it. My little butt connector trick came in real handy here because I had to run the fuel line from the left hand side of the van to the right hand side of the van and using them to tie it to the frame they shouldn't wear down. And here's a little look at my fuel pump being connected outside the van with an inner tube wrapped around it to stop water getting in. And yes I know the exhaust has to poke out more so I don't die of fumes. All that's left now is to get this thing hooked up, powered on and test it out. Everything's connected, dead excited, go to fire it up and we have a warning light. The shitty green tube and connectors from earlier have been leaking. So I fixed that and then fired it up. On this display to prime the heater, you hold the top and bottom buttons and then you can see the little icon show up in the bottom. You then hear the pump tick in and I had to get my friend to tell me when the fuel had reached the heater. After that, it was power time and I just waited for it to heat up. Like it's going to take off or explode. Oh wow, things getting warmer. That's it, the diesel heater is fitted. Now I started fitting the diesel heater in February 2022. It's now October 2022. When I went to fit it, I realized it wasn't gonna go on the side I wanted to because of the way transit minibuses are laid out. And that's why I had to rearrange the whole camper van and that could be seen in the previous video. 
Now the reason this video is taking so long is I had to rebuild the whole front end of the camper van, which took a very, very long time. And then I had quite a lot of van issues as well, which took a lot of time and a lot of money. Then we got to summer, I went on a few trips, and then camera broke, that's been going on for months. Insta360 have been amazing with their customer service testing, it's just taken a long time. But now I have a new camera, they've actually upgraded me as well, which is brilliant. But with all that going on, it really knocked the wind out of my sails to get this video finished. But here we are, it's done, it's over the line. So the camper's not far off from being perfect. I've got to do a load of finishing touches, that'll be a, another video. Then I've got to do the garage, again that'll be a further video. Honestly, like I've run out of cash at the moment, we're getting into winter, I don't think they're going to happen for a while, but we'll see what happens. Because I've run out of money, I've come up with a really random idea, which is going to be my next video, which is going to be, it's going to be weird. Um, yeah, that's going to come out and see what you think. And one thing I do have to point out is flip to a clip where you can see my fuel line leaning on the exhaust pipe. I fired the heater up, obviously the exhaust pipe gets hot, it melted through and started leaking oil. Don't do that, that was a big no-no, that was nearly a catastrophe. So I have fixed that and strapped it out of the way. Apart from that, I've not really had to test out the heater every time I do, it's running fine. We're into the colder months, so I'm definitely gonna go out and test it properly because I wanna go away snowboarding in February, and I'm really gonna need it then. But yeah, heat is in, perfect, job done. As usual, thanks for watching. If you've got any tips, comments, or suggestions, stick them in the comments below, and we will get to the prices. See you in the next one, which is gonna be weird.